Hey everyone, welcome to a very spooky special Halloween episode of Minis for Pennies. Ooh. I'm your host, Poor Andy, aka the Dungeon Miser, and I stopped sneaking chocolate out of my kids' candy buckets long enough to bring you another bone chilling project to save you money. Hang on, one more Kit Kat bar. Okay, let's go. My favorite miniature projects are always the ones where I make miniatures for monsters that are neglected by the corporation. I like to make cheap versions of overpriced miniatures, but uh, bringing a monster to the table that nobody can buy because some bean counter doesn't think he can profit from it is very satisfying. So this week's project is the Undead Wall, aka the Living Crypt or Living Wall. There is just something about a wall of skeletons lunging at you that is really horrible, and it is a perfect addition to an adventure dealing with the undead. I'm going to show you a simple technique that you can use to make my version of this monster, but you can also use it to make scatter terrain, dungeon walls, objectives, whatever you like. Now, I could chop up a few dozen skeletons to make this wall, but the cost would start to add up. To make a good wall of bones would probably cost around $3 in plastic skeletons, and that's just too much money. Instead, I'm going to make a few tools that will help me sculpt as many bones as I want over and over using cheap plaster. To make the tools, I gathered up a few skeletons of various sizes, a couple zombies, and some dinosaur fossil toys. To make the tools, I chop off the head, skulls, ribs, whatever parts I like from the various miniatures, and then I pin them to some wooden dowels. In this case, I used some cheap corn dog sticks and some paper clips to pin everything together. And here is my collection of tools. Next, I need to make a mold box for the plaster. You can make your wall a perfect rectangle or square if you like, but I'm giving this box an uneven shape to help convey the weirdness of this monster. I'm making this box from foam core scraps and hot glue just like with my silicon project, but you could use cardboard, plastic containers, whatever you have. When the box was finished, I took some of this modeling clay and warmed it up in my hands. This is a greasy kid's clay that doesn't dry out, and it's perfect for this project. You can get this stuff at any place that sells kid's craft. I got mine at the Dollar Tree, so very inexpensive, and you can use it over and over. I first put down a very thin layer in the bottom of the mold box and textured it with a ball of crumpled foil. This gives the wall texture in all the places that I don't end up molding something later, and it covers all my fingerprints. Now it's time to mold the bones. The trick to getting the look we want is to press a small bead of clay into the base clay for each item that we're going to sculpt. I put a pea-sized bead of clay down for the skull heads, and then took the tool and pressed it in firmly. Don't worry about the edges of the bead for now, just make sure you get a good impression from the small bead of clay. Also, try to avoid symmetry. A bunch of uniform heads is boring. So turn, pivot, rotate your tools before you press them in. Even a few upside down skulls here and there looks good. Just repeat that process with more beads and your various tools. 
until you have the look that you like. After I was done pressing zombies and skeletons and fossils into the clay, I used the fossil ribcage tool to put the bone texture on the raised edges of the clay beads around the sculpts that I made. The more bony texture you get, uh, the better the final project will look, I think. So when you're done with all the clay sculpting and you have it the way you want it to look, mix up a batch of dental plaster pour it in and scrape the back flat. You can actually uh, cut shapes into the plaster while it dries if you like. I just left mine with the rough scrape texture because I don't care so much about how the back looks. But feel free to decorate the back of the wall with anything you like. I also like to tap the mold on the table to get rid of as much air bubbles in it as possible. Then I let that set overnight and pulled it out of the mold. I put this on a nice big round base and I decorated the base around the wall with a few more bones to make it flat, some from the dollar store, a few of my regular bone warriors. And to make the plaster stronger and to make that plastic stuff easier to paint, I strongly recommend a coat of Mod Podge. Then you can prime it and paint it in your favorite bony colors. And here it is, the undead wall. So as I said, I made mine as a miniature, sort of like a mini boss, but you could easily make dungeon tiles or walls for your terrain collection. You could also use a plastic cup as your mold box and make round bone swirls for an evil portal or a haunted pool. This is also a good technique for making bases for undead monsters and armies, especially if you combine it with the silicon molding technique I showed you last month. You can use the tools and the clay over and over again, so have a blast! cost for the miniature itself was super cheap. It was 20 pennies for the tools, a penny for the base, and 25 pennies for the art supplies, so 46 pennies. But the tools and art clay can be reused, so every mini after the first is about 3 pennies each. Another cheap and easy miniature that you can't get in stores and so spooky. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more spooky good projects. And now you go have fun with your bone creations while I go find some more fun-sized diabetes. Thanks for watching.